What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about how to get gold camos or gold skins in Battlefield 5. We're first going to start off with the basics and then we're later on going to get into the harder assignments of each class. Right now I got 4 gold skins on each class so I was like right now I kind of have the experience on all classes and all assignments on how to get them and what the best ways are to get them. So that's what we're talking about in this video. I got timers on the screen right now. If you want to click to a certain class, if you're only interested in how to unlock gold skins for the snipers or for the support class, you can just go to that time and you should get right into it. But first we're going to start off on the basics on actually how to get a gold camo. All right, now, how do you actually get a gold skin? Getting a gold skin on the basics, you simply have to get your gun to level 10 to start unlocking the gold skin. If you play with a gun, you start leveling that gun. You can max rank it to level 10. The way you rank up a gun is simply by playing with it, getting kills with it, playing the objective. Just get her as much points as you can by using that gun. Once you ranked it up to level 10, you can actually start doing the mastery challenges. And these will reward you with gold parts for your gun. Now, how to start doing the mastery challenge is once you get your gun to level 10, you go to the main menu and you start going to assignments. We're going to have the K7 as an example. You see the assignments here, I already got four assignments going right now. But let's take the K7 as an example. You click to one of these assignments and we're going to the K7. Once you get a gun level 10, you should see this, K7 Mastery. The number after it says how many challenges you've already done and on what challenge you are right now. So we're not, right now we're on challenge number 4 for the K7 Mastery Challenge. Go ahead and click the Mastery Assignment. Now right there you see the K7 Mastery Challenge. What I have to do, you only have to complete one. Take a note, you only have to complete one. You don't have to do both of them. This mistake I made at the start. So you only have to do one. Now, the challenge is very simple. It's kill 20 enemies while being prone in one round or do 60 while being prone. Once you complete this challenge, you will get a part of your gun gold. For any guns, it's a different challenges. Um, depends on what challenge you are. If you're on challenge one or challenge six, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a different challenge every time. Once you complete the challenge, you actually get a reward and that's a piece of the gun that's gold now. Where can you claim this? It's by Armory. You go to Armory, right here I actually did a M1907 part, that's gold right now. And here's where you claim it. Right now I already have a claim, you just have to open the menu, go to Armory and go to Shipments. Sometimes you will start on Features, just click the to click to shipments and here is where you can claim it. Right now I've already got it claimed so there are no shipments available. Once you claim it, you don't have all of your gun gold. Right here I'm going to show you the M1907 as an example. Right here I've done some challenges. We're going to customize here um, in your company and we're going to look how much parts we got gold. Every challenge you unlock one part gold. It's not the full gun, you only unlock one part. So here I've already done a few challenges. We are, let's see how far we are. All right, so we're on the last challenge for the M1907 and that's getting the receiver. So I've already done five mastery challenges. Every mastery challenge unlocks one gold plated thing. If you want to get the full gun gold, you want to go ahead and do all mastery challenges until there's no available anymore. You know how to get the full gun gold if you have also this part gold. Now it shoots that all gold plated and that's how you get the gold skin. Alright, the first class we're going to be looking at. We're specifically going to be looking at the hard challenges for, for each class. For the Ulster Rifle class, we're going to be looking at the last challenges. The last challenges could be if you're using the semi-automatic rifles on the Ulster class, we have the example of the Guerra 43 that's on its last challenge right now. You have to get 10 headshots in one life when enemies are in the objective areas or you have to do 20 in round round. If you use an automatic rifle, you have to do 10 enemies while attacking an objective 
in one life or do 20 in one round. It depends if you have an automatic rifle or semi-automatic rifle what the last chance will be. Alright, we're gonna be talking about how I unlock the camos. I don't know if this is the best way, I've unlocked quite a few camos and I think I figured out the way I like the most, so this is how I did it. There is a difference between the challenge for the automatic assault rifles and the difference for the semi-automatic rifles. For the semi-automatic rifles, you want to be looking for headshots. What's important to know is you need the enemy to be on the objective. Either if they are defending or attacking, doesn't matter, they have to be on the objective. You don't have to be on the objective yourself. So what's nice about this is you can actually start shooting from a distance if enemies are on objective. Now, how I did the last chance for the semi-automatic rifles on the also class. First step you have to be doing is you have to be attacking. This is by far the easiest way. I did it all on breakthrough, so attacking on breakthrough is the best way to do it. Now, there are certain maps to do it on. What's important is you either want to have a long match. So, that's why Hamada is a really good map to do it on. It's very open, you will find a lot of snipers laying down. So those are quite easy headshots. Also maps, Narvik are pretty good because the objective areas are very open. That's a very important thing you want to be having. You want to have open objectives on the map. This is why I like Rotterdam as well. Rotterdam is very good for the semi-automatic headshot rifles to unlock the headshots. This is because it's very open, you can shoot from a distance and there are a lot of headshots to get on the objective. Enemies really like to be on those objectives on Rotterdam. So that's why Rotterdam is a very good map. Narvik is very good because it's very open and Hamada is very good because you'll find a lot of snipers. Also Hamada takes quite long. So what's important is be attacking. Don't play too aggressive because you don't have to be on the objective yourself and play the right map. Now for the automatic rifles you want to be more up close with the enemies. What's important with the assault challenge again is you want to be attacking of course. That's pretty much the challenge. So what this means is you have to get kills when enemies are on their objective. When they are defending on their objective. You can either do this by killing people that are defending their objective. Or you can try and cap an objective and kill enemies off it. Or when they are pushing the objective. Just make sure... The enemies either are on the objective that's theirs or you are on the objective that's theirs. If it's a blue objective that pretty much means it's yours, the kills do not count. What you want to be looking for is the offensive kill. You can see that once you get a kill you get a few few points and you see below what right when you get a kill, offensive kill. That means you got an attack and kill. What's important to know is I did it on Rotterdam. Devastation is a good map to do it on, Arras is very good, and Twisted Steel is very good. Because the automatic assault rifles are actually quite aggressive, so you want to have a little bit more close quarters. For the medic guns, the last challenge to get the full gold skin for your medic weapon is getting either 10 hipfire kills while being on the objective in one life, or do 20 in one round. Now, what's very important about this challenge is the map you're doing it on. Rotterdam again is a good map, Devastation is a good map, Fjell is actually a good map, apart from the beginning it's quite hard, right after that it actually gets quite good, but it's important to just go for hipfire kills. This is very frustrating, but just push through it and try and hipfire every kill you get. Now what's a little trick to do this on, is your specializations. What I normally do is, for example, we got the MP40 right here. Normally, I specialize the gun to where it makes it more accurate, as I have right here. But, what you should do for the hipfire kills, is if you do the same way as I do, you can actually just reset it. Most of the medic guns, not all of them, but most of them, actually have a specialization where it increases the hipfire. These are these two. These are very important to complete the challenge on. If you reset your specializations, it, this doesn't cost company coins. You can just make it more easier to get the hipfire kills. You don't have to make your gun more accurate because you'll be hipfiring. So what's important about these two 
it'll make your gun be a better hip fire machine. So what's important about this one is actually you want to be attacking as well. This is because you want to find as much enemies as fast as possible in one breakthrough round in one game. If you're defending, you gotta wait for the enemies to push in. The better way to do it is if you're attacking, because now you can push the objective and you will always find some enemies. So make sure you replay the right map, make sure you're attacking, and make sure you use the right specializations. For the Recon class, I'm gonna be talking about two challenges. One is getting 10 prone kills in one life or the 20 in one round. And the other one is the last one is get 10 headshots when enemies are on objectives in one life or do 20 in one round. First, the prone kills. They are very frustrating to do. What's important about the prone kills is your scope glint. This is a mistake people make. If they lay on the ground while scoping in for enemies, searching for them. What's actually a thing about Battlefield is you're very hard to spot when you're laying down. But if you're scoped in, Enemies will be spotting your scope lid. That is why it's very important to first of all position yourself good to the enemies. This means you don't want to be facing the enemies. You don't want to be on the place where enemies will be looking to. Normally try to flank or try to kill enemies from sideways or behind. Second of all, it's make sure you're not always scoped in. This way enemies will be able to spot you very easily. Search for enemies. When you're not scoped in, once you've found them, then scope in and try to get the kill as fast as possible. Now, for the last challenge for the weekend class is getting the 10 headshots when enemies are on objectives. What's again important is you gotta be attacking. Um, the best thing to do it for me was on breakthrough and the map you're doing it on. One of the best maps to do it on is Hamada. The reason for this is, is because the Match always takes very long. You need the time for this. Also, you will be finding a lot of snipers on the objectives. These are quite easy headshots often. Again, what's important, make sure they are not spotting your scope plane fast. So look for enemies on objectives while not being scoped in, then try to kill them. You don't have to be on the objectives yourself. The enemies have to be though. So if they are on the objective, you can go ahead and headshot them. You can pretty much do this one on very open maps. That's important. Aerodrome is a very good one as well. Might be one of the best, apart from Aerodrome doesn't last that long. Always the matches are quite short on Aerodrome. So important, attacking. Make sure they don't spot your scope glint. And play on open maps. Rotterdam is actually a good map as well. This is because the first, the second, and the third sector, they have all flags that are very open. Especially at start of Rotterdam, you always find snipers defending the objective. You can try and sit in the back of the map, try and get some headshots, and you will always find them on the objectives. The same is for the second sector, when they are on the bridge or below it. Try and push from the side, the right side, and try to headshot them towards B. On the third sector, you can try and headshot them on the B flag in the house. Rotterdam and Hamada are both very good maps. Also Twisted Steel is very good. And this is especially of the sector with the bridge. There are always snipers trying to head glitch above the fortifications. Those are very good headshots to get. Just make sure they don't spot your scope plane that fast. The last one for the support class. The support class is, uh, in my opinion, the most easy one to get the gold skin for. What you have to be doing for is get either 10 kills in one life while being on the objective, and enemies gotta be on the objective, or do 20 in one round. Now, pretty much what you gotta be doing is you gotta play aggressive with the support class and play the objective. Just make sure you're on the objective and getting the kills. Again, the easiest way to do this is by attacking on breakthrough. The maps really don't matter, just adjust the map to your gun you're using. If you use the K7, play a bit more aggressive, so Rotterdam and Devastation will be better for that. If you play a more longer range gun like the MG34, play on maps like Hamada or Aerodrome. Now, what's important with the MMGs, 
or the bipod guns is play aggressive with them. You can actually do this, trust me, but play aggressive with them. If you sit in the back bipoding trying to get kills, it's not gonna work. Also with defending, it might take too long for enemies to push. So actually try and attack with them and play a little bit more aggressive. The best way you can attack with the MMGs is by flanking, so you can still use the bipod and laying down behind enemies, or actually try and hip fire, so you gotta be really up close. I find it's very easy on Rotterdam to use the hip fire mode and get up close on the enemies, or what I did is using the bipod mode, and I did this on Aerodrome, as you can see here in the footage, what I did with the FGO. Just play aggressive with them, and you should be able to do the challenges. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any more questions, if I didn't talk about something, let me know in the comments. I definitely want to answer them, trying to help everyone. I hope this was helpful. Definitely let me know if it was. Leave a like if it was helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.